Welcome back to TFT Central. Today we're going to be taking you through the best settings for the Gigabyte Aorus FO32 U2P. These settings will probably also apply to the FO32 U2 model, so you can use them there as well, but we're going to be taking you through our recommendations for both SDR and HDR usage. There's quite a lot of different settings available on this screen, so let's get into it now. In the main menu, you see the gaming sections at the top. You can change some of these settings if you like. We'll come back to the black equalizer control in a minute, but the rest of them are more to do with things like adapter sync. You'll probably want to turn that on if you want for gaming. Most of the settings that we're going to adjust are actually in the picture menu here. So there are a few different options depending on how you want to use the screen. We're gonna set the screen up in its full native wide gamut mode. So if you don't mind the more saturated and vivid colors of wide gamut, then we will set that up in its optimum configuration for you. Or alternatively, you can use the different preset modes here, the emulation modes. There's one for sRGB here, and then within the custom section, you can also set this to use Adobe RGB or Display P3 as well. So, so if you want to work with any of those color spaces specifically for your content, then you can do so that way. We'll come back and reconfigure the sRGB mode in a minute because that's likely to be the one that some people will want to use for SDR. For now, let's just set the screen up in its wide gamut mode. So we're gonna use the custom preset mode for this. That will give you full access to all of these other settings that you see on the screen here, unlike the default eco mode. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn the brightness down. We're gonna turn this down to a setting of 42. That will deliver you a luminance very close to 120 nits, which is our typical recommendation. Alternatively, you could set this to 55 for 150 nits or 76 for 200 nits. We're gonna go with 42 there. Contrast can be left on default. These other settings here can be left on default. Gamma can be left on default. We are gonna change the color temperature mode. We're gonna move away from the normal setting and we're gonna use the user defined setting. And then we're going to adjust these levels, the RGB levels to 96 for red, 97 for green, and we'll leave blue on 100. So that's 96, 97, 100. That will deliver you a white point very close to 6,500 Kelvin. So that will be optimal in this mode. Color space we're going to leave on native here because we want to operate with the full wide color gamut. And then the only other thing you may want to experiment with is in the gaming section, the black equalizer section. Now this can help raise some of the near black shadow detail a little bit. So we found that a lot of the near black shades got crushed on this screen as they do on many OLED screens. But turning this up a couple of notches, somewhere between two and four, will hopefully help improve that a little bit. Experiment with this in your content and perhaps using some dark grayscale patterns or something. See if you can find an optimum level, but we found that this helped bring out that near black shadow detail. It doesn't raise blacks and it doesn't impact other aspects of the image. So we're gonna just set that for two for now. The other option, if you want to operate with a sRGB gamut for SDR content, that will deliver you a more accurate setup in terms of its color space but you'll see that the rest of the settings here, apart from brightness, are now locked. Again, you can raise the brightness here, basically raise it to your preference. Somewhere around 45 would, would deliver you a luminance of around 120 nits. So we're gonna go with that for sRGB. Obviously you can switch quickly and easily between custom with your full wide gamma or sRGB here if you want. If you're using the custom mode with the native wide gamut, you might also wanna check out our calibrated ICC profile that's linked in the description below. That was used to calibrate the screen in this mode back to an sRGB color space for use in color aware applications. So check that out below if you want to try that as well. The other option is to use the custom mode and then switch your color space to Adobe RGB or Display P3 emulation. But you'll find that if you do so, you'll see that all of the other settings apart from brightness are again locked in those color spaces. So they're pretty locked down the sRGB, Adobe RGB and DCI-P3 modes apart from brightness. So use those if you want, but we think most people probably want to just use the native mode or perhaps sRGB. We'll also have a look in the OLED care menu. So that's available via its own section. And you're gonna to wanna to turn on as many of these features as possible really. 
They will help mitigate the risk of image retention and burning. Obviously, if you experience any problems with any of them or they are distracting during your usage, you can come back and turn them off. They should all be turned on by default anyway, but come and check these out and just make sure that they're on to your liking. The APL stabilize setting is one other that you might want to have a look at. So by default, it's set on low and with it set on low, that will return you a uniform brightness behavior for SDR and for desktop usage, which is ideal. So that will avoid any kind of ABL dimming during desktop usage. So you'll get a nice consistent brightness. You'll find that this setting changes when you enable HDR anyway, which we'll talk about in a moment. The middle and high modes may be interesting to experiment with for SDR multimedia content and gaming. They can allow the screen to reach up to higher brightness levels, but only for small APL. And then you get ABL dimming on anything larger than that. So we like to stick with the low mode really here for desktop usage to have a uniform brightness behavior. So we've enabled HDR in Windows and there's quite a few settings and preset modes available when you're running an HDR. You'll see that the picture menu has now entirely changed to just offer you the HDR preset modes and there are five to choose from here. We studied all of these in detail in our written review which is linked below so definitely check that out if you want to know more. But we found that the HDR game mode would certainly be the brightest mode available here. It supports up to the 1000 nits peak brightness spec of the panel but it's also importantly brighter than a lot of competing OLED screens with their peak 1000 mode. It may be brighter than intended, but it is certainly brighter and not darker than intended like many of those screens are. You'll see that the dark enhance section is set to on here. So that will just make the brightness of the near black gray shades a little bit brighter and that can help improve shadow detail. You can change this if you like, you can turn that off, but we'd encourage you to try the screen out in darker content, perhaps with some grayscale test patterns, see what is going to be appropriate for your lighting conditions in your room. That is turned on by default, but like we say, you can turn that off if you like. The other settings, I'd probably leave them as they are, unless you particularly want to boost brightness even further through this light enhance feature. That's probably not recommended. It just seems to cause further washout of the image. So apart from the dark enhanced setting, the rest of the HDR settings in HDR game are fine. So that's a screen set up for both SDR and HDR modes. Hopefully that's useful. If you've got any questions, please leave them in the comments section below. Don't forget to hit subscribe as well to stay up to date on future reviews, news and other monitor information. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.